Hello everybody, Clint Seeley here. Um, just wanted to bring you another new tutorial. I actually had a nice little question on our Say It With Stitches uh, Facebook page. Let me show you that. We'll go out to the, the Say It With Stitches Facebook page and we scroll down we can see here a gentleman posted a picture on our Facebook page with a little message to me that reads Mr. Seeley can this design be created with the designer plus v7 if so do you have any tutorials well I don't have any tutorials but this is a great question and thank you um, Miss Anna for uh, posting this Miss Anna Russell uh, this is a really creative design it's somebody else's work um, and they did a really good job, but as you can see, something like, like this might be very popular. It uses uh, applique, it uses uh, regular embroidery, and it looks like it can be customized right here in the middle. Now this question gave me a little inspiration to show you how to design something of your own following this theme. And the techniques that I can show you will allow you to create something exactly like this. I'm going to do something a little bit different but almost, as far as inspiration goes, almost exactly the same. So I said here, yes, this can be done. I don't have any tutorials. Well, after today, we will have a tutorial for that, and I will uh, post that on there for you, Miss Anna. Uh, so let's close this out. <clears throat> um, and let me minimize the Facebook page for Say It With Stitches, and let's bring up the, the Bernina Designer Plus software so as you all may know I really like to work in the art canvas when I'm creating things um, the more and more of my tutorials that you'll see you'll see why and the inspiration for this design can easily be done using a few of the really cool tools available to you on the art canvas side so let's switch on over to the art canvas here and here we are we're in art canvas view. Now I'm going to change my document size to maybe uh, six inches wide and we'll do four inches tall. Then I'll zoom in a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to do that. <clears throat> but I don't want to make this too complicated. I want to make this, I want to uh, reduce as many steps as possible and just bring this idea to you so you only have to watch it once or twice or maybe uh, pause it while you're trying to do it on your computer pause it on while you're playing this video on your uh, iPad or on your TV if you have a web smart TV and, and follow along I want to make it easy for you to follow along step by step so what I decided I wanted to do instead of just making uh, the word so I wanted to give you ex an example of something you could do for yourself for your own family name or say you're making some Christmas gifts uh, and you could do this for somebody else's family incorporating it in, in a project you'll see what I mean when when this starts to lay out so <clears throat> as you know my last name Seely so I'm gonna do something with my the initial for my last name, an S, a nice S. So that's gonna start off with just clicking the lettering tool and I'm gonna type in a capital S. There you go. Now this is not the prettiest S you've ever seen. I'm, I'm gonna make it bigger. By default, Corel likes to By default, Corel likes to just use the regular Arial font. And as you know, you can just change that. I looked through these fonts earlier. If you just hit the drop down screen and you scroll through these fonts like so, it'll give you a thumb, it'll give you a view as you scroll through them of what that font looks like. I already know because I've I didn't want to waste your time going through five hundred different fonts. I made a decision to do the brush script font right here. Now you may not have brush script on your computer. I like this font for this project, for this particular project, 
you may want something completely different. I like the way the S looks uh, if I'm just doing one letter. Now, if you don't have brush script, let me show you again. I've probably, I've showed this in other tutorials, but I'll do it real quick. Let me show you a, a nice little website that you can go to, dafont.com. If you go to, or I call it dafont, dafont.com, you can see there are tons of different types of true type fonts. And you could, at a glance, say you wanted to look at something that was like a brush script or, or whatnot. Under their script fonts, they have different categories. So I'll go to brush. See, I clicked brush. And I just want to see S's. So I'm going to do a capital S. I want to show 50 fonts and show them to me in a large size. Submit. And you can see, you can just scroll through real quickly and see all the different types of S's or whatever your last name is. You can see all the different types of fonts. Um, this is very similar. This is a, a kind of brush script. This is very similar to what I have on the screen on in my Corel Draw right now. But you could spend literally spend hours on this website going through different fonts, and then you just download the font here. Of course, then you have to unzip it, find it in the folder, and install it to your Windows directory. If you have a newer Windows operating system, it'll do that automatically when you right click and hit install. Then you restart your embroidery software and it has been installed in your true type font library. Um, if you want directions on how to do that specifically, I do have another tutorial somewhere, so you'll have to flip through them on my YouTube channel on exactly how to download and install true type fonts so you can use those dudes. But let's get back to the tutorial. I don't want to waste too much time on that. So here we are. I, I have a nice S. Let me turn that a more appealing color. I like blue. Heck, I like blue. So there, I've got the I've got the S. Now I want to create the middle section to where I can type in, for my purposes, the Sealies. Okay, if your last name was, say, Williams, this would be a W, and you would be putting in either Williams or the Williams or the Flintstones, so on and so on, okay? <clears throat> I'm going to show you a new tool today, maybe one or two that you haven't seen before. Um, the shaping tools in the Corel Draw side in the Art Canvas, there are several different shaping tools. I'm going to do more tutorials down the road that will show you how to use these really cool shaping tools, features that you don't have in the, the digitizing uh, side at all. So, next thing I want to do is just, I'm just going to draw a vertical rectangle right here. So I'll click on the rectangle tool. Then I'm going to draw a box. Now I want to center everything. I want to make sure everything's centered. So I'll click the S and hit the P. The letter, the letter P on your keyboard will center the object directly in the middle of the document. So. If I hit P for both of them, you know everything is perfectly centered. Now to get a preview of what this S is going to look like without this section there, colorize it. I'm going to take the outline off for now. So you can see, here's kind of a mock-up of the way the S would look. And then I can, just to give you another example, the Sealies. I can drag and make this dude bigger, and I'm going to put that in the middle of the document. And you can see, this is kind of giving you a look of what the finished product might look like. <clears throat> so before going on too awfully far, you can as you're, you can create a mock-up in the art canvas side in Corel and see, okay, yes, I like the way this looks, or I like this idea, so let's turn this into embroidery or embroidery applique. That's what I'm going to show you how to turn it into embroidery and then how to switch it to applique. So the actual S here and this where the yellow is, this background will be one object and it'll all be an applique where you can cut out your own fabric and really change the look and, and make this as creative as you want. So I'm going to delete this text 
because when we convert this to applique, we're going to type in text that's actually digitized for embroidery. Now what I don't like is I don't like, if, if we zoom in here, you can see these square corners right here. I don't like that. I, I like when, when we're doing rectangles or squares, I really like the way that rounded outlines look. So you can see I've got this rectangle tool selected and I can go right here go right here and see how that's turning the corner into a rounded corner okay something like that now let's see how that looks that looks pretty cool now this box is too long so I'm just gonna drag this dude in hit P and that'll recenter it is that too wide or not eh, make it a little bit smaller hit P that recenters everything. I kind of like the way that that looks. Now let me turn that blue. Look at there. Oh, let's get both of them the same blue color here. So this this is the way that we're going to look. After we're done digitizing this and converting to applique, this whole piece is going to be one piece, all right? And it's going to be an applique cutout. So you can choose any color of fabric do it as an applique and then it'll put a nice satin finish outline around this piece of fabric and then it'll just embroider in whatever text you want here it's gonna be real easy to do but right now we have two different objects you can see we have two different objects right now we want to make these objects one that's easy to do in Corel draw using the weld tool first though since this is an interactive shape this rectangle we have to click this guy right click and then convert it to curves. Convert that one to curves, and the same with the text. These both need to be curves or vector curves, okay? Once those are both converted to curves, we can now start shaping these objects. And if you just make sure all of these are selected, so both shapes are selected, when both shapes are selected and they're curves, we're going to have some shaping boxes pop up, as you can see here. Now, usually when we hover over these, it's going to tell you what they do. All right. <clears throat> For this example, I really wish when I was hovering over this, it would tell you what you want it to do. But for right now, what we're going to be doing is going to be using simply the weld tool, which is that guy right there. So if I click on that now, you see we have one curve one shape and if I put an outline around this so I'd right click on like the red if we put an outline on this and let me kick that up to four points you can see you can start to see what the outline around this object is going to look like that would be the satin stitch finish for this applique object and then this would all be the fabric of your choice and then we would be putting the sealies or whatever name you want in this area right here since the digitizing software, since V6 has a really good outline function, I could do it in the art canvas side, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to disable the outline. So you would just right click that clear box that has the X right there. Okay. And now all I'm going to do is size this guy the way that I want it. It's three, like three inches high right now. Let's do four, four and a half inches high. So I'm just going to drag this until you see it get up to about four and a half inches, which is about right there. I'm going to hit the P on the keyboard to recenter. Okay. And I'm just zooming in using the trackball on my mouse, that little wheel. When you, when you move in forward, when you move it away from you forward, it gets, the object gets bigger, and then we come back out. Okay. So I'm going to convert this to embroidery. So let's hit convert. Boom. There we go. Now see, this might be the effect you want. You might not want to do applique at all. I don't know. If this is what you want, then we could slap an outline on this dude. And we could just drop some text, some lettering right here, and move on. That's easy to do. Let me show you how to turn this into applique. So simply the right here as you can see in the color film we have one object 
it's selected. And then I believe I can just go over and click applique. And now we're in applique mode. That object is selected already. Let's try hitting enter on the keyboard. Boom. Now it just turned it right into an applique object. Now you're not seeing any fabric here. That's fine. But if we move back over to the color film, you're going to see. Look, your applique object is there. There's your trace stitch where you would trace and put down your fabric. Then there's your tack down and there's your satin finish. So there we have, we have an applique object. Now what you might want to do, an, an easy thing to do, you can't do it right from here. After we're done, you can save this dude as a EXP or a DST, which is going to go, that's what's going to go to you, into your embroidery computer. But then we could reload it after it's saved as a DST and EXP, whatever, we can then reload it in the embroidery software. And then we can select just one of these objects. This cut this cut line right here, or this this tack down, or not tack down, trace line. You could select that by itself and save it. Open it up in your cut work tool if you wanted to, or in your cut work software, and make it an actual cut line, then. You could have your machine cutting out all the fabric using Bernina's cutwork tool. It's a more advanced feature, so I'm not going to explain it in the scope of this tutorial. I just want you to know it's possible. Once we get to this point, yes, we can export a cut line, open it up into the Bernina software where you can make a cutwork shape. We could absolutely do that. <clears throat> so here we've got We've got our applique element, and then simply, I'm just going to go back to the lettering tool. Oh, geez, where's lettering? It's Friday. It's right. I was I was looking right at it. So here we got lettering, and now we're going to use for the Sealies or whatever family name you're going to use. We're going to use actual font that is designed for embroidery. So, the... Oop, can't even spell my own name today, folks. This is, this is totally funny. CLEs, hit enter. And then place that dude right there. That might not be the font that you want, and that's fine. As you know, that's the London font. As you know, we have a ton of fonts to choose from. So I could, all right, let's look, take a look at that one. Oh, that's looking beautiful. That might not be what I want, but there's just a lot of really good. Here's one called Night Owl. Hey, that looks pretty good. I kind of like that. So let's go with the Night Owl for, for me. Just move this around until it looks mathematically correct. Sometimes when things are mathematically correct, to the eye, they still look off. So you want to you want to move this. You would like it to be mathematically centered, but sometimes you have to just take manual control. And say, hey, that looks centered to the eye, and to the eye, that's that's what's really the most pleasing. So here we go. Let me go ahead and make the sealies a different color. That way, it'll make it a separate element. And in your color film, it'll show up as a separate element, and it'll make sure that, that that name goes last, and everything stops, and you can switch thread, and that name goes last. You could keep all of the thread and all of the color the same, but you do want to make your last element a separate color in the software. That way you have the option when you're embroidering it to change thread or not. You can always just hit the little green button, the little red button, turn it green, and it'll keep It'll keep stitching without changing the thread. Y'all know how to do that already, but that's it. Um, that's really all I have for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please place your questions in the commenting area on the Say It With Stitches website where I'm going to have this video. As always, thanks for watching, and please, if you like this video, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube. Just hit that like button. That's all I ask. Take care.